Hello friends, very happy Saturday, very blessed Saturday morning to you. Gosh, remember when weekends meant something? You get to the end of the week and you get to put your feet up a little bit. Well, it seems like all the days are running together these days and we're all kind of getting through this pandemic together. But no matter, we have each other, we have these moments. Thanks for sharing this episode of We Are The Church. Brothers and sisters, just a week ago yesterday, we were standing out, a few of us, at the Fairhaven Cemetery, and we were celebrating the life of our sister Margaret Beyer and uh, seeing to the things that we needed to see to there. She had picked out the 12th chapter of Romans to be read at her service, and so we read that passage. Now, you are all very familiar with Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but become transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can discern what the will of God is, what is good and perfect and right. But I want to read to you uh, verses 9 through 13. This is Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection and outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal or be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to the strangers. You know, you could take these four verses and the little phrases that are in there and you could assign one to each day of the week. It would probably take more than a, a whole week, but just put them on a rotation and say, today I'm going to be practicing letting love be genuine, or today I'm going to practice outdoing one another in showing honor, or today I'm going to persevere in prayer. And I think you could do a lot worse than to begin to frame your life around those instructions from the Apostle Paul. I don't know what made me think of it, but as I was reading those verses, I was thinking of about a time more years ago than I would like to admit, when Judy and I had first joined the United Methodist Church. We belonged to a congregation that was nestled into the foothills of the San Bernardino Mountains. And we decided that we had a, a young son and a daughter, and uh, we decided we were going to jump in with both feet and get involved. And so uh, we asked if they could use some help with their youth ministry. Now, there were three children in the youth ministry at that church, three youth, and uh, two of them had already graduated, and they were uh, both rivals trying to date the third one, who was still a senior in high school. We told them that you had to still be in high school to belong to the youth group, so we immediately grew the group from three down to one. But there were a lot of youth that were on the roster in the church, and so we began a practice. As the kids went down for a nap every Sunday afternoon, Judy would start calling through the roster. The church had a little van, and I got the license so that I could help uh, once a month to drive some of the the women in the church who, who didn't drive any longer, drive them to the second service. But the rest of the time on Sunday afternoons, I would make a, a one hour circuit around the town and then a one hour circuit after youth group was over to deliver the kids back. And we started getting five, 10, pretty soon we had outgrown the van. Uh, five, six years went by and by the time the kids were getting their driver's license, we created a pattern for them in which they could uh, count every Sunday night on coming down to the church. Now, many, many Sundays, they were just there to eat the pizza or have the snacks or to play the games that we were playing, and they were always uh, wonderful, boisterous games. We went on work trips together. We went on uh, spiritual retreats together, and we made sure that a, a half hour out of every meeting or more we spent in study together in the Word of God um, and honestly, Judy and I always wondered if we were getting through, uh, such as the nature of us, I guess, that we doubt from time to time. But I will say this, 
when this one remarkable group of seniors uh, was getting ready to graduate, and it was not long before I got ordained and was appointed to another church. In that senior year, there were kids from all across the social spectrum at the high school in town. There were the cool kids, there were the smart kids, there were the, the student body uh, council kids, there were the athletes, there were the 4-H kids, and there were a few of the kids that you just, you didn't know where their life was going. And uh, one or two that liked to sit out on the outskirts of this, the school beforehand and, and smoke their cigarettes. But they all seemed to click together when it came time for uh, youth group. We had neither <laughs> Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, uh, male nor female. It was just this wonderful family of God. It was, Judy and I like to call it the Camelot time because uh, it was really something quite special. The most remarkable thing happened um, just before we left that church, actually. Uh, this group of kids was getting ready to graduate. And a few of them uh, who were getting great grades and had great attendance found out that one of the kids in the youth group was, um, was missing his sort of senior project or whatever they called it in those days. He had to do a very important paper. And if he didn't get it done, he wasn't gonna be able to graduate with the rest of the group. And these kids uh, borrowed their parents' car three or four of them, and they drove over to this one youth's house, and they spent the whole night with him, helping him write a paper, helping him get it right, helping him proofread, helping him get it ready to hand in. And when he looked up at them and said, why are you doing this? We never hang out together at school. And they said, you're part of our family, and you have to graduate with us. I got to go to that graduation ceremony and watch them all walk, and this cheer erupted from our kids when this one young man walked across the stage with his diploma held high and he got to be with the rest of them. I don't know, but I think that's what Paul was talking about when he said, let love be genuine. And I learned a very important lesson as a leader in the body of Christ that day. You can talk about love till you're blue in the face, but you can never force anyone to act out of the love of God. Only the Holy Spirit can move somebody's heart to a place of genuineness and love and to a place of authentic uh, Christian koinonia or fellowship in the Holy Spirit. I saw it happen. I claim no credit for it. Judy and I sowed some seeds and the Holy Spirit did the rest. And I know that the Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit that spoke to those youth in those days and that called me into ministry is still active and alive and moving across the world today, perhaps even calling you to something new and remarkable in your life. So be of good courage on this Saturday and uh, listen for the call of the Spirit and remember that when you are telling people that you love them, let that love be genuine. Why don't we pray? Loving God, we know that apart from you, we can do nothing, but that with you, and with the power of your Holy Spirit, all things are possible. And even hopeless situations can be redeemed through the body of Christ, through the help of friends, through the kindness shown to strangers, through our commitment to outdo one another in showing honor. And so, O oh Lord, we pray this day that by the touch and the blessing of your Holy Spirit, you will make the love of Christ genuine in each of us. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Well, friends, I encourage you to spend the rest of this day getting your hearts ready for worship tomorrow, and I will certainly um, be seeing you in church, at least in the chat room. Um, and I want to remind you today, as always, it seems like California has kind of reached a plateau in this latest surge, and maybe we're going to see some numbers go down. So let's keep up the good work. Wash your hands, read a psalm, and tell somebody today genuinely tell them that you love them. See you in worship.